Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Wander to the Edge. Zan, how you doing? I'm good, Adam. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great yeah. to see you again and great to be able to share this time with all of our friends from around the world. And it's kind of impressive, kind of kind of humbling in a way to just to see all the different people and all the different friends from around the world that join us for the program. And they can join us every Saturday right here. It's true. I'm Wander to the Edge. It's 11 a.m. Pacific. That's where I am. That's the most important place. Be Pacific. Yes. And then you are Eastern. That's right. Here uh, from the Edge of Adventure headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. So we're in the Eastern time zone. But of course, uh, lots of people joining us from Europe. So in the British Standard Time, translate that to BST. Seven, right? Seven. And then yes. eight o'clock central european time so anyway those are the times and you can catch us right here on facebook and twitter youtube instagram and no matter how you're joining us we just appreciate you being a part of the wander to the edge family okay zan we have a great guest today this is the time of the week we look forward to because we get to introduce our friends to other great friends great inspiring travelers and of course today we have another great guest lined up so she is from our Twitter travel tribe and her handle is Jules Halvey and really excited to have Julie join us today. And uh, let's hit that music because I'm ready to dance. Yeah, it is <laughs> an inspiring traveler joining us right here on Wander to the Edge. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Julie Halverson, welcome to Wander to the Edge. Hi, Adam. Hi, Zan. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys today? I'm good. I'm good. Has it We're so off there? What's that? Has it cooled off there? Um, it's down to 97 here in LA today. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, going to be like this for the next few weeks. But it's it's always hot here in LA. I think it's mostly just because of me. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Well, we're excited to have you. And one reason that I really wanted to have you on the show is you just have just a smattering. That's a, a bonus Scrabble word there. A smattering of travel stories for us to kind of, you know, touch on and talk about. Um, where do you want to start, Julie? Where, where should we start our conversation? I think we should start with the Harleys. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you both for having me on today. I really appreciate it. And it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, we do tend to travel a lot on our motorcycle. Uh, we've done a lot of cross-country trips um, out to Glacier, Yellowstone, through Colorado, uh, out to Utah. We've traveled through the Ozarks. Um, it is a lot of fun, but it's a totally different type of way of traveling. You are packing super light and you have to do laundry along the way. Uh, so you, you have to keep that in mind as you're, as you're staying in different places, what you, what you need to do. And really it's a different type of planning because you're planning by mileage, um, how far you'd go in a day, such as most People go around that 400 mile mark where on in a car you could go longer, but you've got heat, cold, rain to contend with. So you have to add extra time in in case you really get stuck somewhere. I mean, we've been through some hailstorms that haven't been a whole lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's all small towns. We don't travel on the freeways. We try to stop in the local bars or the local cafes. And, you know, you meet people along the way. People always come up and talk to you when you're on your motorcycle. I don't yeah. care. I don't care if they're motorcycle riders or not. 
people come and talk to you and they just so we have to establish though because there's different ways there's different communication with motorcycle um, riders depending on the type of bike that you have so we need to establish Ooh. first the kind <laughs> of bike that you have we have a harley yeah yeah okay it's a street glide and uh this is our newest one we did a bunch of cross-country trips on on a heritage soft tail which was a little bit more challenging uh you have luggage that fits on the back and and uh it's easier with the street glide to have the luggage but yeah it's it's interesting um you do do the wave when you go past somebody you have to demonstrate the wave well you drop the harley your, wave you drop your hand you drop your hand yep just drop your hand and kind of i it's kind of more like a peace sign almost you just put one finger down or two fingers down you don't like wave you if you put your hand down but we wave at every person on a motorcycle it's not specifically yeah. but yeah i think it started with harley drivers and we yeah. have we have went to sturgis several times so that's been interesting we we stay out of the fray we stay down about 40 miles south of sturgis in custer and we have some friends who live there and they have a guest house uh so we go into Sturgis to do the walk around and look, but we we uh, kind of stay out of the fray. Got it. Still, yeah. What's the best, though. Yeah. What's the best part then about seeing the countryside or traveling on a Harley? The best part. I know there's got to be a lot of awesome parts about that, but the thing that comes to mind, number one reason to do it. The wind in your face and feeling of the freedom of. Yeah, it's it's almost like you're outdoors, and we are outdoor lovers. So that that definitely, it's just that it's a totally different feeling. I I can't. It's tough to describe. Um, you know, by the end of the day, you might feel like that wind in your face is <laughs> not as fun, but but uh, yeah, that feeling is. There's nothing like it. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. And I love going through mountain passes on the bike. I don't ever get car sick on a motorcycle. I don't. Yeah, I really. And you don't have that nervousness. You have the whole lane. Whereas in a car, you're going around those tight corners on a cliff, let's say. And, you know, you feel like you're getting squeezed in. You never feel like that on a motorcycle. So. I think there are benefits to riding mountain passes on a motorcycle other than it's pretty cold, but we have heated vests for that. Okay. Now you talk about the sensation of being outside on the bike. And I remember I used to have a Harley soft tail slim okay. back in Chicago. And it's just that 360 immersive experience. You're not just in the car as a passenger. You are part of that experience right. in terms of the journey. Yes. Yeah. And to be honest with you, some of the photos I've gotten off the back of the bike have been amazing. I mean, because you don't have, you can take a photo at any time. You don't have to pull over and take one. You know, you're, you're more apt to get some great shots and I yeah. love taking pictures. So yeah, it's, and, and the camaraderie, I suppose, with other people too is fun at times. I mean, sometimes we've traveled with other people. Sometimes we've traveled by ourselves. Uh, we've toured with groups before, which has its own challenges. It's fun, but it has its own challenges. <laughs> Getting everybody going and ready. You have to leave early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's hot out, you want to have most of your miles done by one, two o'clock. You don't want to be, you don't want to have to have 200 miles after the heat of the day. So I know you, you say you've traveled with groups. I also have it on good authority that you have traveled to see groups in particular music yeah. groups or bands. Yes. Um, what, what would be one of those bands that you've traveled many different places to go you, see? You two is you two is my band. And <laughs> I, I don't know. I've loved them ever since I was a kid. Uh, so, you know, the eighties, early eighties. And I really, I don't know. There's just something about their story and what, what they have to say. And of course, musically, but uh, 
Yeah, I've, I've seen probably, I don't know, at least a couple hundred concerts, not just you two, but I've seen, you know, a lot of bands, but um, I'm kind of a concert junkie. And, and so we, we have traveled several different places. One of the most memorable was Stockholm. That was a lot of, that was a lot of fun. Uh, there's a little story behind that. Um, I could not find tickets through a conventional source very well. Um, and this was really before I met a lot of people on Twitter um, that are really in the know about you two. And so now I feel like I could have easily gotten tickets, but back then I wasn't quite as, as savvy to get tickets. And I noticed that there was uh, some VIP tickets still for sale and it included dinner and a couple drinks. And I thought, you know, it's kind of a wash by the time we have dinner and cause food is pretty expensive in Stockholm. And so anyway, we did the VIP access. We got in and it just seemed like it was taking forever for the concert to start. And I mean, it was past time and there was only maybe a third of the people in the venue. It was at the globe, which is a really cool venue in itself. Um, and so, and it looks just like it sounds It's a globe. Um, it's a smaller venue. So, you know, we had really good seats. And we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, some gentleman comes out and starts talking in Swedish. So we didn't know what he was saying. And the girl next to us told us that, I mean, thank goodness she spoke English. She translated for us and said that we needed to leave right away. There was technical difficulties. And we were like, technical difficulties and we have to leave? And... So they herded us out the doors and we all stood outside for about two, three hours. And, wow. and then people around us started getting texts from people that they knew that were still in there. And there was a guy with a gun. <laughs> and, and so they were searching. Everybody that was in general admission had to stay and sit in the seats and uh so they first they searched all the seats then they searched everybody who was on the floor and finally they canceled the, the concert at about oh i don't know 10 30 11. we stood out there for a long time waiting so they canceled it and we ended up having to come back two days later which thank goodness our flights were two days later were three days later so we got to go to the concert but yeah that was interesting <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that that's a lot of dedication. Were you in Stockholm and you were hoping to get tickets or did you go there purposely? No. Okay. No, I built a trip around. We had, we had different options of, you know, I like to, and, and other times we've flown places to see you too, too. Uh, we, I build a trip around it. Um, we, we choose a destination that we would go anyway. I mean, for instance, no diss on Cleveland, but I probably wouldn't book a concert in Cleveland. Um, you know, it's, it's things like the, we, you know, Washington, DC, we had a lot of fun. We got to see all the Smithsonian's. We stayed right next to the venue and, you know, there's just like Los Angeles. When we went to the Rose bowl, I saw my son and cause he lives in Los Angeles and, you know, so there's generally multi-purpose, trips but yeah we built a whole trip around that around that stockholm concert <laughs> we went to norway we did an extensive trip in norway and then we went to stockholm afterwards and stayed there for about a week so yeah so so how has twitter affected your desire to travel your ability to travel or in any other way. I mean, you're super active on Twitter. Yeah. You have so many friends and, and a community that you've built there. How has it affected travel for you guys? I feel the connections we've made uh, have afforded us some opportunities that we wouldn't have been able to have 
such as if I did want to get tickets to a U2 concert, I probably could, no matter where we're at. And uh, also, just luckily, I don't even know how it happened, but um, I met a group of people in the NASCAR community, and I'm a big Dale Jr. fan, and we got to go to his last race at Homestead, Florida, down by Miami, and I got to meet some great people. Um, I was in charge of his banner for that race that we had at his, um, I don't know where, you know, his merchandising trailer and, and, uh, so everybody would come up and sign it. And I don't know, it just, I, we just fell into it. Anyway, I got to meet his, his manager PR guy. And I also got an autograph from Dale, but yeah, it's, it's been, and, and last year we were supposed to go on a motorcycle trip that ended up getting canceled and we had to fill in the time and we decided to drive up to Banff and Jane on Twitter, uh, she, boy, she really set us up for some great, great hiking and great places to stay. She was a huge help. Uh, her Twitter handle is Winds of Jane, and she was amazing. So I feel like, you know, you can reach out now to people, and they certainly love to show you their area or, or help you make plans. So how about you guys? Have you ever met anybody traveling on Twitter? I met Adam. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I Actually, I was flying in to go see a NASCAR race, uh -huh. and it was in uh, Talladega. So I flew into Atlanta. Yep. So wonderful. Yeah, I mean, Talladega too. I love it there. Yeah. With, but without a doubt, social media, and you know, in particular, I think in some ways, um, Twitter has this ability to connect people, and um, it, it, it's a very enriching experience honestly i know a lot of people don't get it they maybe they shy away from social media there's a lot of negativity there too right sure. i mean it depends on how you use it and mm -hmm. what kind of accounts you follow and engage with but social media does have this ability to connect us and mm -hmm. if you do it right it's a it's a wonderful experience it's one of the reasons why we do this show we like it meeting all these getting in a more personal way to meet these uh, great people yeah. Um, but yeah actually it was through social media that Zan and I met. I mean, okay. otherwise, of course, we never, we wouldn't even know who the other person is. It's all, all thanks to, I think, Instagram probably first. Okay. Yeah. And Twitter second was mm -hmm. um, right. how we discovered yeah. the platforms. Yeah. It's it, a great way you, to meet people. Yeah. Do you want to tell the story, Adam, of meeting in Atlanta? I guess, in terms of a story, what are you thinking? It is the fact that I was walking around the airport in a mm -hmm. suit, coat, and a hat. Is that what mm -hmm. you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. I figured that would make me a little bit easier to spot. But the thing about the airport is there's always somebody you, you sort of tune out anything out of the unusual. I mean, out of the ordinary. You just you sort of get used to seeing all sorts of things at the airport. So um, but yeah, it was great. I mean, it was great to see Zan. I, we've actually Zan and I've met in person only twice. Uh, once was that trip um, uh, here in Atlanta when she was basically just flying uh, through. I think you were you were on your way back at the time. To, from NASCAR, uh, yeah. Uh, and then the the other time I was out in LA and met you briefly out there. So, uh, but yeah, you're right, guys. I mean, it's a wonderful thing, this community that social media and Twitter can help create. Um, the key is just to use the use the tool for something positive, which I think is, is what we do. So, uh, yeah. And again, Jules, you can be found at Jules Halvey yes. on Twitter. And how long have you been active on Twitter? This started for you approximately when? I think it's been since about 2013. Uh, I started out just following actually some like celebrity stuff and YouTube stuff, NASCAR. And then I actually started conversing with people, which took a little bit. I didn't start conversing with people right away. And I think it was, um, I saw a post by Roar Loud. Uh, and 
and that's I think my first encounter with the travel tribe and since then it just took off Kathy and Frank keep promising that they're going to be our guests. So if you're watching Roar Aloud, <laughs> we're waiting for you to pick your date. We've had Always Five Star. We've had um, Jason from yeah. Coffee and Road Trips. Yeah. We've had Hannah Henderson. We've had Seema. Seema Lots of great Veteran Hiker has been on the yeah. show. Yes. Yep. Um, and quite a, quite a few other invitations have been extended. And so you guys... Um, yeah, we definitely got to get Roar Loud on, on the show. We've said that now for some time and, uh, it's so good. I mean, it's just, it's just a group of friends. I mean, the show, we, we just remind people, this isn't an interview. It's not like gotcha questions. This is yeah. <laughs> uh, in three friends sitting around, uh, getting to know one another, but also sharing that experience with, with viewers from around the world. Yeah. So, all right. So you've got the Twitter side of things, but also, um, Julie, I know that, there have been in, I guess, if we were to look back on at your travel portfolio, there have been quite a few unusual type travel opportunities that you've had. What are some of your favorite ones? Uh, paragliding in Austria probably is tops my list. Uh, and kayaking out to a glacier and watching it calve into the ocean. Uh, we were way out in the ocean. It took us a couple hours to get there and we beached and we had a guide and that was pretty amazing. Uh, landing on a glacier on Denali in a, in a bush plane was pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, I try to, I try to come up with something that's, that's unique every time we travel and it doesn't have to be that out of the ordinary, but but yeah, we, we have done some fun things. Uh, there was a boat tour that we went on. My, my son and I went out to the Nepali coast in Kauai. And there was 20-foot swells. It was one of the craziest things I've ever done. Uh, the, the pilot or the captain, she was ex-Israeli Navy. And... She was really, really good. Thank God, because <laughs> it was it was pretty dangerous. To be honest with you, we we got done, and my son looked at me, and he's like, "Well, we survived." <laughs> and I was like, "Yep, we did." <laughs> so, no, so, it was it was beautiful, but yeah. scary. So, did I hear you say that you kayaked out in the ocean for a couple of hours to see the glacier? We were brought out. In okay. The ocean, ocean a few hours and then dropped, dropped off at a black sand beach with our guide. And we, we, we kayaked about five hours. Wow. And, and we, we got over the glacier though, almost right away. It was raining most of the day, which in Alaska, it's almost always raining anyway. I mean, it's common. It's not like a heavy rain, but it's, it's yeah. more of a light rain and which didn't, bother us at all but um one of my favorite memories is the guide pulled out some blueberry tea it was cold and you know i mean it was cold outside and he said let's sit here and watch the glacier calve for a while and he pulled out some blueberry tea and we got to sit there and drink it and watch the glacier in our kayaks and that was pretty amazing that's incredible yeah and when you when you travel is it only for you, is it only about seeing the location or do you try to bring other elements into the travel experience when you go to new places, see different things? We definitely focus, well, we focus, our main focus is our hiking. Uh, history is really important. My husband was a history major before he got his law degree and he's like, quite the expert on World War II. Uh, so we did go to Normandy, which was really interesting for the 70th anniversary. That was, that was such a moving experience. And also we went to Croatia to meet my family. And that was, oh yeah, that was incredible. I got to go way out in the mountains, like way out and we would have never found my grandfather's house if it wouldn't have been for my mom's cousin who brought us out there. 
and his house still stands um, completely because the people who bought the land left the house up and just built another house. And she welcomed us with open arms and took us into the house and she showed me, she made sure it was translated to me that this was your grandfather's picture, this was your grandfather's chair. And she went around the room and told me what the original stuff was from when he lived there. He immigrated here in 1923, I believe it was. And that's when he met my grandmother, who is also Croatian, which is really interesting because when they grew up, I think they only lived 15 miles away from each other in Croatia. But uh, yeah, so that was, that was amazing. It was something my mom really wanted us to do. And we went there after she had passed away, but she had already paved the way, went over there and met people and figured out the logistics. And so it was, it was very, very nice. Have you, have you ever done any of your genealogy that you know where you're from or your family's from? I have done for Christmas a couple of years ago, my husband gave me the ancestry.com kit. Mm -hmm. And then I've also done the D23 as well. Okay. Um, both of my parents and well, pretty much all of my family, except for a couple of distant cousins are deceased. So just trying to learn more about, you know, um, the history and the background. So I am 50% Polish. Uh, okay. My mom's side came over from Poland. Mm -hmm. I have not had a chance to go there, but that's on my wish list to take yeah. um, my daughters and I there. Mm -hmm. And then on my dad's side, my mom or his mom had a really interesting history of basically being uh, gypsies like through Europe and London oh, wow. and Scotland and Ireland. And she finally um, her family immigrated to Canada where she was born in Quebec and grew up speaking French. So I oh. have a whole list of places that I need Me to do. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Adam? Well, and I'm, I'm uh 50% cowboy, 50% <laughs> Viking and 50% hippie. <laughs> so do you have to go to Norway? <laughs> so actually the, um, the Viking part, which is what I just called Viking, but yes, it's that uh, part of uh, Europe there, Scandinavia, but it's not the majority of, okay. of my, uh, my background. It's a small percentage. I just like to claim it because I think it's cool. But um, <laughs> clearly, in my case, it's a lot of German, uh, Austrian, mm -hmm. and um, uh, English, Scottish, Irish. And I haven't personally, I mean, you know, I wish I could say I've done more. I haven't personally looked into that. I've had the benefit of the, of the fact that both my parents and then one of my grandmothers worked extensively on that. So, you know, I get to reap the benefit of, you know, all the work that she uh, put into it. Mm -hmm. But it is cool. And I think you had a wonderful experience getting to go yeah. back to Croatia. I think that's a Amazing. awesome thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we When we were in Norway, we also looked up uh, my husband's some of my husband's, uh, we went to a graveyard and got to see a bunch of that stuff. And then his mom's cousin uh, won the sculpture contest to do all the sculpture on the city hall in Oslo. So we got to go look at that. And we went to her hometown of Dalen, where we found there, Chuck had some relatives there, but we didn't get to meet him. So but yeah, it, it was really fun to see his history too. Hmm. It's interesting how travel shapes you and your idea of who you are and the experiences, but even more so when you work, walk in the footsteps of your family and those who have come before you too. Yes. It's, yeah. We got to see the vineyards my grandfather worked in. They had vineyards. They had, I mean the the graveyard with his mom and dad that they were buried there the church that he went to i mean it was it was quite and i also got to meet another cousin of my mom's and she was so thrilled to meet me because i mean i suppose i look my, like my mom too but uh she said she told me that my mom she'd get her hand-me-downs 
from my mom, they'd send them over to Croatia for her. Oh. And it was such a sweet story. We are talking today with Julie Halverson, joining us here on Wander to the Edge. Every Saturday at this time, we have the privilege and the honor of introducing great friends and travelers. And you know, I've said on previous broadcasts that what kind of ties us all together here, this group, this travel tribe, is that love of travel. Yeah. And it doesn't always mean the same thing to everybody, but that's what ties us together is mm -hmm. that love of travel. And we like to dig in a little bit, get to know people, know, get to know their story, uh, what they love to do, hear about some of the fascinating things that they've had the opportunity um, to like to travel to watch you two and things like that. But it really is a uh, privilege to get to, to get to do this. And it's just a real laid back opportunity to, to get to know people. And Julie, you know, it's uh, thank you. I first want to thank you for joining us today and uh, opening up, sharing a little bit about your story. Thank you. Um, what uh, once we clear COVID and things go back to normal or wherever we're the new normal, what what's the next big travel item on your list? Uh, we had a trip planned to go to Ireland, uh, three weeks in Ireland, and that was for May. Um, I mean, it's already completely planned out, so it wouldn't be too tough to to book that again. Uh, otherwise, really, my main thing is to get out to Los Angeles to see my son. Uh, that's that's tough. I haven't seen him in a long time, and I don't see unless we drive and meet halfway. I'm not sure when the next time I'll get a chance to see him, and so. That's that's my priority. I'd love to see him. So, yeah, that's probably, and we we do shorter trips too. You know, like spur of the moment. Like last year, we just went to Nashville quick. You know, for a week. Uh, so there's there's certain things you know we we definitely will do again. But I can hardly wait. <laughs> Well, Julie, when you come out to LA, we have to meet up. Yes. For and sure. now that we've established um, that you're a badass rock and roll biker queen who <laughs> loves NASCAR, we have a lot in common that we need to talk about. We do. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, again, thank you, Julie, for joining us. Here is your Twitter handle. So for those of you Watching at home, you can look uh, Julie up on Twitter at Jules Halvey, at Jules Halvey, and let her know that you heard the uh, show today, that you enjoyed getting to know her, and join in on the Travel Tribe. If you haven't already, join in. We want to get to know you as well and hear about your great adventures. So, uh, Julie, again, thank you. Fascinating story. Great, uh, great heart for travel and for people too, I can tell. And just appreciate your the time you took for this opportunity to get to know you here on Wander to the Edge. Thank you so much. I really, really had a lot of fun getting to talk to both of you. And I look forward to possibly meeting both of you someday. Hope so. Yeah. Should be just around the corner when uh, we get life back to normal or something close to it. Yeah. All right, thank you. All, All right. right, take care. You too. Okay, everybody, we'll see you next time. Right here. You know where. Where is it, Zan? Wander to the edge.